says our God, comfort those who live in darkness, mourning neath their sorrows load. Speak unto Jerusalem of the peace that waits for them, and tell of all the sins I cover, and that warfare now is over. I'm so grateful for the Aquinas Center for gathering us this night to pray, to watch, to wait, and to hope. I don't know about you all, but I feel like I really need Advent this year. And yet at the same time, it feels like we've kind of been in an Advent for a very long time, but an Advent not of our own choosing. A time of waiting to go back to school, go back to church, even to the coffee shop, waiting to finally embrace a friend or a grandmother or a niece or a nephew, waiting to sing, to breathe, to pray in proximity of other people, waiting for a vaccine. Waiting is something we've been doing for months now. And yet the church gives us this gift again of time set aside to wait, to practice waiting, to practice hoping again, to hear the dreams and longings and questions of the prophets, to imagine new visions of a world made new that exceeds all we can ask or imagine. One of the things for which I most look forward in this season is to open the book of Psalms with Advent eyes. And among my very favorite Psalms of this season is Psalm 85, in which the psalmist imagines justice and peace kissing, truth springing out of the earth, kindness and truth meeting, justice looking down from heaven. This is a setting of that vision, of that promise by my friend Janie Cotter. Lord, show us your mercy and love. Lord, show us your mercy.
In the book of Isaiah, the prophet cries out, Oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down. They're words that we heard in the lectionary yesterday. How many places in this world do we need to cry out those words, Oh God, that you would tear apart the heavens and come down. This next piece is one that I wrote when I was in college, inspired by that permission of Isaiah to ask questions of God, to ask questions of each other and our world. Indeed, all of Advent reminds us that our lamentations, our fears, and even our questions can always also be some of our most profound prayers. circle be unbroken? Will the power of death prevail? Will the voices seeking justice be rejected and grow frail? Will revenge replace forgiveness? Will our pride replace God's peace? Will the innocents be victims and the violence increase? Will the words our God has spoken be revised or be blessed and broken and the blood of Christ outpoured is the only food of freedom for the servants of the Lord hear the story shared at table call us all to peaceful in all creation show us love's the only way My friend uh, John Bell from the Iona community in Scotland has often pointed out how romantic so many of our Christmas carols are. And he makes this point in a rather comic way when he says, if you were giving birth in a barn, would it be a silent night for you? And he makes a good point that so many of the Christmas carols that we love, beloved carols, um, tell us much more uh, than scripture suggests we would know about the birth of Christ. And so this is uh, a response song that John wrote, a carol of its own, especially for this season of waiting called We Do Not Know, which reminds us what we do know from scripture and what we do not know about the birth of Christ. 
We do not know if snow had fallen or if there was a cloudless sky or if the mother wore a blue gown and wondered if her child would die. But this we know, there was a lady through whom God's silent or if his mother screamed in pain or if he lay beneath a halo and cried for food then cried again but this we shepherds presented Jesus with a lamb, or whether men from foreign countries were tired and weary, coarse or calm. But this we We do not know whether at Christmas the world will move from war to peace, or whether debts will be forgiven, or those in prison be released. But this we From the beginning, the Christian story has been one of remarkable reversals. When Gabriel visits Mary, the news stirs up in her a song of a world turned upside down, of mighty cast from their thrones, of lowly ones raised up, of the hungry finally fed. And at Christmas, we confront the most confounding reversal of all. We recall that God who could have come among us as anything a prince, a king, a ruler, a president, chose none of those things. Instead, coming among us in the most vulnerable form possible, a refugee child with no home. The words of Matthew 25 take on particular force for me in this season, reminding us that the birth we await in these weeks of Advent 
invite us to acknowledge that the birth can never be neatly contained from the life you live, poured out in service to the poor and the suffering, through a love so excruciatingly inconvenient that it led to the cross. This next piece is another psalm, a beautiful setting in Spanish of Psalm 130 by uh, my friend and colleague Santiago Fernandez. It's called Espero en ti, Señor. And the interesting thing about the word espero in Spanish is it's to wait and to hope. You use the same word for both. And this um, psalm is not typically sung during Advent. It's usually a Lenten psalm. But the, the theme of waiting, of course, but also um, the phrase, desde el abismo, clamo a ti, Señor, from out of the depths, I call out to you, O God, seems particularly poignant right now in this moment we're in as we wait and we hoped together. Thank you, Santiago, for the gift of this piece. <laughs> i 
espero en ti, Señor. Mi alma confía en tu palabra. These next two pieces are um, two of my favorite Marian pieces. Uh, the first is a carol, um, Gabriel's message, the angel Gabriel, and the second, um, one of my very favorite uh, Marian um, songs uh, in Spanish. <laughs> has drifted snow with eyes of flame. All hail said he, O lowly maiden Mary, most highly favored lady, Gloria. How blessed am shall be, whom every age will praise continually. Your son shall be Emmanuel by seers foretold, most highly favored God, 
she said, my soul shall laud and magnify God's holy name, most highly favored lady, Gloria. Of her, Emmanuel, the Christ was born. Christian folk throughout the world will ever say, most highly favored lady.
for so many people, this season is such a paradoxical time with all of the flashing lights and ornaments and joyful Christmas carols that begin even before Thanksgiving. And yet I'm keenly aware in a normal year what a challenging time this month is for so many people um, who struggle with all manner of things, especially loneliness, mental illness. And this year, especially being so far from those we love, it feels especially difficult. Um, and I think it's important that we not gloss over those realities in this season of loss, even as we anticipate great joy and hope. And so I wanna share this piece that I wrote many years ago for my sister. It's kind of a, a lullaby, uh, a comforting piece. Um, when she was going through a tough time in her life and I found these words by um, the New Zealand um, hymn writer and poet Shirley Arena Murray, who um, actually died earlier this year. And I was really drawn to this text because it wasn't kind of the Hallmark greeting card, uh, Song of Comfort. It actually left space for doubt and disbelief. And so I share it this night with all those who suffer, who struggle, and all those who care for those who do. This is called, And Jesus Said.
Before I sing the last piece, I want to express my deepest gratitude um, to the Aquinas Center. Um, I'm privileged to work at Candler School of Theology at Emory University as the Director of Catholic Studies and teach there, an incredible community. But one of the key partners we have um, is the Aquinas Center, and they sponsor so much incredible programming. Um, over the past couple of years, we've just had so many incredible speakers uh, in Atlanta at Emory. Um, but not only that, it's the relationships that we have between one another and um, between the whole Archdiocese of Atlanta, the Aquinas Center has a special care for our students and they support us in so very many ways. And as you can imagine, being a center that puts on a lot of programming, this is a particularly challenging time. So if the spirit moves you um, today or tomorrow for Giving Tuesday, I invite you to consider a contribution to the Aquinas Center. I'm so grateful to them and especially to Sister Mary, to Alice Cameron, to Callie Tabor and to Lindsay Faust for all their incredible work as well as uh, Danellis. Um, it's just an incredible team of, of women that I'm privileged to work with and grateful for their support of nurturing Catholic identity at Emory and in Atlanta. Um, several years ago, my friend uh, Liam Lawton, who's a priest from Ireland, uh, and my friend Chris De Silva and I were working on a collection around themes of Christian pilgrimage. And Liam sent me a 10th century Celtic poem for inspiration that began it is time for me to pass from the shelter of a habitation to journey as a pilgrim over the waves of the bold and splendid sea. And immediately when I started reading that, I thought, man, there's a song in there. And it was a really challenging time for me. I had just moved to Atlanta, a lot of change in my life, and I would sing those words to myself to and from Emory each day. And slowly the song began to take shape. And I share it to end our time together tonight because Advent is itself a kind of pilgrimage, one of anxious expectation. And like all of life, it's a journey that is often uncertain, and especially these days, messy, imperfect, filled with wrong turns and frustrating indirect detours. Yet through it all, we hold firm to a promise not because everything is perfect, not because we have everything figured out, I certainly do not, not because our faith is always as strong as we would hope it would be, but exactly because we are imperfect people in a wounded world, trying to make sense of our joys and our pains, trying to make sense of each other. Advent is most of all a journey of preparation not only for Christmas, but more deeply for that heavenly home beyond this one. Advent is, in the words of Thomas Merton, the beginning of the end of all in us that is not yet Christ. And so trusting in the improbable hope that flows from the promise of that vulnerable baby crying in the night for his mother, let us end our time together this night, lifting our eyes to the mountain and singing one another home. at the 
Time will come. Your time will come. Lullaby, lullaby, what comes to to 